Well, Mr. Rankis, I, I asked about the four QPs. I'll ask you about it again. Uh, what do you think the government needs to do now? Well, the decision of the Human Rights Tribunal is very clear, and it's always been very clear. This government must respect their obligation to pay compensation to the children who have been put at risk through the willful and deliberate negligence of this government. For years, this government has attempted to avoid their responsibility. They've tried to ignore the jurisdiction of the Human Rights Tribunal. But at the end of the day, they cannot exclude children who are the most vulnerable and the most uh, discriminated against in this country from this process. We support the accord that was negotiated. It has so many good features in it. But this accord cannot rest on the principle that the government can choose to ignore certain children and not pay proper compensation. Our message to Minister Miller from the beginning has been do the right thing, respect your responsibilities under the Human Rights Tribunal, and to bring forward compensation that includes the children who were directly named under, who were directly involved under the Human Rights Tribunal ruling. The other thing I'd ask you, sir, is is it fair for the, the kids to, to wait a longer period of time while this drags on and on and on in their families? What we've seen is years of um, belligerence, years of interference by the government, years of attempting to block their legal responsibilities, and we have lost many, many, many beautiful young children to this broken system. La décision de uh, tribunal des droits humains est claire. Le gouvernement doit respecter leur obligation de payer la compensation pour leurs enfants autochtones à risque. Ce n'est pas acceptable pour le gouvernement d'exclure euh, les enfants euh, et, et pour créer un processus pour payer la compensation pour les autres enfants. Je respecte l'accord. La pour l'NPD, nous soutenons l'accord. Mais c'est clair, le gouvernement doit réouvrir le processus pour assurer que le gouvernement va protéger les droits des enfants sous le mandat des droits euh, des tribunaux des droits humains. How concerned are you about the prospect of this deal falling through now that the tribunal has uh, issued this decision? Well, we unfortunately, since uh, this process first began, we've seen a lot of bad faith. Uh, we've seen the government spend millions uh, to try and stop it. Uh, we finally have a deal in place, and we told the minister from the get-go this deal has to be done in respect to the Human Rights Tribunal ruling, and they ignored that. Uh, we're telling the government, you cannot walk away on this money, you cannot walk away on the children, you have to do the right thing, and that is going to mean bringing the children who are defined under the Human Rights Tribunal ruling, bringing them into this process and making sure that they get the compensation and their families get the compensation that they were entitled to. And one more thing, just could you be a little bit more specific about what you'd like the government to do now? Because they could do a number of things. They could go back to the Federal Court of Appeal. They could renegotiate this final settlement agreement, or they could just pay out the tribunal order. There's a lot of open action. Well, the government has lost every single attempt they have taken at federal court uh, against the tribunal ruling, every single one all the way just prior to going to the Supreme Court. So I would suggest the government not to waste any more money on lawyers. Sit down and do this right. Uh, in terms of the, the settlement that's been agreed, it is a very good settlement, but it was flawed from the get-go because they thought they could create an alternate process that ignored the Human Rights Tribunal ruling, and you just can't do that. The Human Rights Tribunal has been very clear. The only reason the government came to the table is because they were found guilty of, quote, willful and reckless discrimination against the most vulnerable children in this country. It is a disgrace that Canada and this government were found guilty of this discrimination. The government has to do the right thing. They have to respect the Human Rights Tribunal and they have to stop blocking this process and they have to sit down and get this money out to the children and their families because they have waited way too long. 
Hi, everyone. Um, well, uh, first of all, obviously, the CHRT summary decision recognizes the historic nature of the $40 billion um, uh, agreement, and um, that's a good place to start. However, it is, uh, I think, disappointing to many First Nations people that a First Nations-led, Indigenous-designed approach hasn't uh, been accepted as complete by the CHRT. There are a number of uh, folks, I'm sure, around the country, First Nations individuals that are, um, you know, wondering and worrying about when compensation might be due. And certainly, from our perspective, obviously, we're going to continue to work with uh, First Nations partners and and um, review the the detailed findings of the CHRT and, and move forward. En français. En français. <laughs> ben, d'abord, merci de, de, de nous écouter aujourd'hui. La, la réalité, c'est que la décision d'aujourd'hui. Euh, représente une affirmation du travail important qu'a accompli le gouvernement durant la dernière année. Euh, il reste que euh, aujourd'hui au sein des communautés autochtones, surtout, euh, que c'est euh, des gens. Il y a des gens qui sont très évidemment très déçus. Il y a des gens, des, des enfants surtout, qui se doivent d'être compensés. Et voilà que la cour euh, vient de statuer évidemment un, un sommaire de, de 16 pages. Il reste les, le jugement final à regarder, à réviser. Euh, mais ce n'est pas une affirmation complète euh, de, de ce qu'on avait présenté à la Cour. Un document important de, de, de rappeler aux gens qui a été mis ensemble avec la participation des ayants en droit, des ayants en droit dont euh, la, part, la participation de, de l'APN, des chefs de l'Ontario, euh, NAN et autres. Et donc, euh, on est, il va falloir évidemment réviser le jugement final euh, et regarder le tout. Mais évidemment, euh, dans l'objectif de s'assurer que les, les enfants seront euh, compensés à leur juste valeur. Look, I think what next is we wait for the final decision. This was just a summary today. Obviously, we work with uh, with AFN. Uh, we work with the Caring Society, we, we work with NAN and all the other partners who, with whom we were working. As, as Minister Haidu pointed out, this was very much an Indigenous-driven and Indigenous-led process and settlement. Uh, so we, we have to go back uh, with our partners and, and see what the final decision is and see where we can move from there. But there's no, certainly no decision on anything today. What are the prospects that it could fall apart given this signal from the tribunal that the deal and that structure does not satisfy its order? I think, look, I haven't, I've only read the summary, uh, and I think Minister Miller may want to comment, or Minister Haidu, but certainly there, there were a number of different affirmations in that summary about, about uh, positive points in that agreement. Again, I point out that, that uh, in, in Indigenous leadership led the process. And so let's wait and hear uh, from all the partners to that uh, in that process, and let's wait until we get the final decision, and then let's see where where the points of of uh, you know the, uh, the the weak points are according to the CHRT, and then let's see what we can do about them. So at this point, you're not going to throw any more money into the deal. I mean, this if you see this as a negotiation, as you see this as a, mo a discussion moving towards a final deal, is it not time to to try? move things along by I think on the contrary um, we've always said that this is of utmost importance to the government and I think uh, the 40 billion dollars on the table indicates the importance and I will remind people there's two tracks there's the uh, compensation track which is what we're talking about today and there's the system reform track which work continues on and which is um, equally and critically important to make sure that the systemic discrimination ends and that children have better and brighter futures in their own communities in care that is Indigenous designed and led. So I think what Minister Lametti is saying, and I know Minister, um, uh, Minister Miller and I have spoken about, uh, is that there is a continued commitment to First Nations to make sure that we satisfy both aspects of, of this, these historic agreements, by the way and agreements that um, our First Nations partners have worked incredibly hard on arriving at. So we'll wait to see the, the details uh, from the tribunal and 
Um, but we'll continue to work with First Nations partners on both aspects, the compensation piece and on the, uh, reforming the system. So we see this as moving into the new year. We all know how the processes work. This, this is not done. We're, we're dealing with this until like next March, next April, as <laughs> like realistically the tribunal comes out with its final thing and then justice lawyers give it the scrub and then so on. This is, we've got to wait. What I think I want First Nations people to know is that they have a partner in us to do this work. And, uh, and indeed, you know, speaking with uh, some of the First Nations partners, um, there is obviously a worry that uh, we will pull back from them to this partnership. But as I said in my opening remarks, um, there is disappointment. This was a compensation plan designed by First Nations people for First Nations people in a culturally specific way. Um, my commitment to those partners is that we'll be with them in the, for the long haul to get to an agreement. Is the government open to renegotiating parts of this final settlement agreement in order to satisfy the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal if indeed they don't agree? Well, again, Brett, I think we need to take a look at the final uh, judgment. This is a summary judgment of 16 pages, but I do want to take a step back to both your questions that you asked. This is much greater than, than the CHRT decision in itself, and there are some things that the CHRT just cannot do to make sure children are safe in this country. Uh, if you look simply at the compensation numbers, the CHRT can only ever accord over $40,000 and under. We presented a package and we stood on New Year's Eve uh, of this past year working late to make sure that we had a comprehensive package that covered a lot of class areas and a lot of categories of children that they may have thought they would be, have been included in the CHRT order. They were in fact not. So we went all the way back to the 90s. Um, this is something when you look at actually the, the children that need to be compensated that we're taking a common approach so that they're not going to three or four different areas to try to get compensated for the same harm that they occurred. So the work that's been done is not insignificant, and I don't want to leave the impression with, with, with listeners or viewers that there's no work that's been done since then. The work on long-term reform, this is a discussion we had uh, with the Prime Minister directly, is, is, is how do we end this? And work to this day has gone on to make that significant change to fix a broken system. Um, so it's much greater than simply this judgment, and I think that's something that we have um, strong reservations when we look at a court case like this and review it in the light of, of what may seem to be the only focal point in making sure children are safe in this country through, uh, through, through, through financial compensation. Those elements you're referring to, there will be a time and place to discuss them with the parties in question to make sure that, uh, that we are putting our best, best foot forward to children. Comme le ministre Miller vient de décrire, on a déjà ajouté des catégories euh, d'enfants euh, qui n'étaient pas, euh, qui étaient hors de la portée de la décision du tribunal ou euh, des, des, des ordonnances du tribunal jusqu'ici. Donc, on a travaillé en bonne foi. Euh, la seule chose que je pourrais vous dire pour l'instant, comme, comme on a répété, euh, on va lire la décision finale une fois qu'on l'a. Pour aujourd'hui, ce n'est qu'une sommaire. Mais on a travaillé jusqu'ici en bonne foi. Et on va continuer de travailler en bonne foi pour justement avoir une, une, une compensation euh, finale qui est juste et équitable pour les, euh, les, les jeunes. Qu'est-ce que vous avez pensé du sommaire que vous avez lu? Bien, j comme j'ai dit, je, je l'ai reçu tard, très tard hier soir. Je suis en train encore de, de le relire et donc je n'ai pas de commentaire euh, pour l'instant. Je vais attendre. Et puis, euh, comme j'ai dit au début, euh, on va aussi laisser la place à nos partenaires de se prononcer et on va travailler avec eux en bonne foi, justement, pour arriver à, un, à une fin positive. Well, they're separate, they're separate pieces of work. So the work on the long-term reform continues. And um, my expectation is that, you know, and I think all parties are interested in continuing that work. And it is complex work. It's, it's, it's difficult work. So that will continue. And obviously, as my colleagues have said, uh, you know, we're going to review this, uh, this decision by the tribunal closely, uh, speak to the partners, and, um, and plan the next steps accordingly. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.